So next from our Board of Education, we also have two members with us this morning, Maggie Tooley and Karen Russell. Our personnel commissioners here today, Kim Baldwin, Dr. Houghton, and Virginia Wilson. Assistant superintendents and principals, Dr. Pulver, Dr. Nian. And so I'm going to uh, introduce our graphic artist, Michelle Bustone, also here in the room. You know, if I could, I would introduce everyone. You really are all special to us. So first, if you are an employee of the City of Los Alamitos, Seal Beach, or Rossmore Community Services District, please stand. If you are a parent of a current or former student, please stand. Representing PTA, a friends of group, a booster club, or a uh, any officer or member, please stand. If you are a business community member other than the Los Alamitos Unified School District, please stand. If you are from the Rotary Club, Seal Beach Los Angeles Rotary, please stand. If you are from the Chamber of Commerce, Seal Beach or Rossmore, I mean Los Alamitos area, please stand. If you are a Lions Club member, stand. that I did not mention, because we have more nonprofits in Los Alamitos than anywhere, please stand. <laughs> so without further ado, I really want to take a second. So the only reason this morning is possible is, as I've got to introduce myself, I'm Sherry Kropp and I'm a superintendent. And I'll just say, thank you. So, I've been in the district since 1985, and I've been the superintendent for eight years, and it really is a privilege and an honor to serve, and it's a dream job for me. I've really enjoyed it. It's really because of everyone in the room. So I want to say a little bit. This morning, it's really our sponsors, and so from Alamitos Eye Care, Dr. Bonnie Patel and John Osborne, please stand here. Yes. We are our title sponsors. So I think they've been our title sponsor for five years in a row. It's our fifth annual State of the District or something close to that. Our valedictorian sponsors from BNSF Railway, Trini Jimenez, Director of Gov Governmental Affairs, please stand. Thank you. From Southland Trade Union, CEO Tom Lent. From National Geographic Cengage Learning, Rachel Farrell. Pacific West Energy Solutions, Robert Cho. And our salutatorian sponsors, RS Crew Incorporated, Ter John Terrio, and Edward Jones, Sean Payne, please stand. And so, what do we think is different about LaSalle? Everything. And so, I'm going to start with it started with a dream. And so you can tell by even our logo, the three green leaves represent our three communities, and we want to do it with heart. And we believe that our schools really help unite our three communities. We unified in 1980. We used to be three separate districts. We are now one preschool through high school, and now we have an adult transition program on our campuses. We have 9,981 students, TK through adult transition. Adult transition students are students uh, with special needs that we serve until they're 21 years old. We have over a thousand employees. We have nine schools, three communities, one mission, igniting unlimited possibilities in academics, athletics, activities, and the arts. So we have 9% receive special education services. 15.6% are socioeconomically disadvantaged. 2.2% are English learners. 2.8% African American. 13.1 Asian, 2.8 Filipino, 25.9 Hispanic or Latino, 46.9 White, 
7.6% two or more races. So what's different about LaSalle? We want to focus on every kid every day. And I always have to say this. We need to be kind to kids. So let your eyes light up when they enter the room. They can tell and they'll notice. And sometimes we're busy and we don't really have the time to pay attention like we should. But at least let your face show that you care about them and you notice them entering. You can make a difference. So sometimes it might feel daunting, one kid, one adult. I don't care if it's a kid on your team. We talked about this last year. Uh, in your class, your neighbor, your niece, your nephew, your whoever. Take the time to mentor them, talk with them, let them know you care, and you can make a difference. So what's our job? Our job is to serve and support. The only reason we exist is to serve and support our families, our students, and our community. That's it. And I like to, I always say, Low South is a great place to live, work, and go to school, and we want to make it so and make it better every year. We also are here to serve and support the dreams our families have for their children. And every parent has dreams for their children. And regardless of what happens as they progress through our school system, our job is to not give up on them. So we have that slide that showed our diverse student population. Each and every one of them have a dream for their future. And so I have a little video. Those of you that don't know me, I'm really probably overboard with them. But I'm going to show a little video. And I want you to focus on the dreams parents have for their children. Hello. Hello. What is your name? My name is Kathleen Jenkins. Hello, Kathleen. And uh, where are you from? I'm from Newport in South Wales. And what do you do for a living? I'm a cleaner and a builder's merchant. OK. And have you brought anyone with you today? I've brought my husband and my father. <laughs> I do like my job because it pays the bills, but I daydream about being on stage. Kathleen started singing. She was about two years of age when we was pushing her around in the pram. And I well up every time I hear her sing. The ears on the back of my neck stand on end, and she makes me feel like I could fly. I've told her she's going to have a name in lights. I can say, that's my girl. That's her. She's done it. If I could spend every penny I had to get her where she wants to go, I'd do it. And, OK, I haven't got much, but she could have it all. You know I can't let you Just slide through my hands And the world holds Yes, yes, I've given today four yeses. Thank you so much. Thank you. I can't believe we've got four yeses. You were brilliant, Kathleen. We told you you'd do it. It was the best day of my life. And so I've seen that video so many times now, of course, and um, that father reminds me of my dad. And when I was 55 years old, we would go out to eat when I would go visit him, and he would literally say, this is my daughter, the doctor. Like, make a big old scene about it. And I'd be on the side going, Dad, don't do that. It's embarrassing. And then, you know, I realized it's worth it. It's worth me to be embarrassed because it's his moment, right? And that's the moment he's so proud. So I love that, and our parents, they all, or they would spend every dime they could if it would help their kids be successful. So whatever we want for our own kids is what we should want for all kids. So we have some amazing heroes of the heart. This is our first time we've ever done this, and I hope this becomes an annual thing. But we have special people that go above and beyond to be heroes of the heart, to make Los Alamitos Unified a great place for students to learn, grow, and thrive. And you help your own students succeed, 
you help other students succeed by being so involved in the school, whether fundraising, volunteering, everything and anything. You, we can't do it without you. The school can't do it without you. The principal can't do it without you. You go above and beyond. And so I'm just so grateful and thank you uh, for what you do. This room I know is filled with PTA volunteers. I see your faces out there and I know the countless hours that you spend of your time uh, giving to, as Dr. Kropp was saying, we exist for our families, our community, and our children. And, uh, and to all of the heroes of the heart, thank you too, for everything you've done for our community and our children. So Trista Gienig, come on up. A Hopkinson parent of two daughters. Trista has served the school for more than six years as a room parent, carnival planner, hookah chair, and Friends of Hopkin Hopkinson president for three years. She works tirelessly to provide extraordinary experiences for all Huskies. Anne has been an integral part of Los Alamitos High School and the Los Alamitos Unified School District for many years, spending hundreds of hours with the show choirs and working on the school site council, the district advisory committee, the operations steering committee, and the PTSA. Her kindness, compassion for students and leadership skills are legendary. Mother to four kids, she's been part of the Lee family for 16 years. She's been a room parent, founder of the Lee Spelling Bee, a master of community fundraising, and has even opened her home and fired up her world-famous pizza oven to feed fundraising effort. And she is at school nearly every day. The mother of twins, she also is president of the PTA, and because of her unparalleled, I got that word, dedication to McCullough students, staff, and community, Everyone in the McCollum community is informed and engaged in the life of the school. Oh. Rachel is petite, yet large in spirit and heart. Her hand is always one of the first to be raised as a volunteer for committees, fundraisers, and school activities. She is completely devoted to our students and has worked for years at elementary, McCollum, and Alba High School. I told her to keep having babies. <laughs> to make their experience the best it can be. Most days you will find Courtney donate a green apron, and stand it behind a trash can for good reason. She has been instrumental in raising the awareness in our community, community about how much food we throw away at lunch and how we can reduce the, and repurpose that waste. Through Courtney's determination and efforts, we have two outstanding programs at McGaw, the Grades of Green Trash Free Lunch Program and Food Finders. Jamie Tubbs is the lead fundraiser on the Oak Campus, which means she coordinates nearly 1,200 students Schedules events, organizes collections, counts money, finds someone to deposit it, and rounds up event volunteers. And in her spare time, she manages communication, costumes, and chaperones for the Showstoppers Choir. And all of this, Jamie does with a smile and heart. For seven years, Ben has been a fixture on the Weaver campus, putting together PE equipment for teachers, wrapping baskets for Friends of Weaver events, sharing his love of exploding volcanoes with students, and counting box tops to help raise over four thousand dollars for the PTA. But a turn in his life has been, but a turn in his life has made Ben even more of a hero at Weaver. Following his diagnosis of ALS, Ben has inspired students to seek ways to help those in need. The Weaver ambassadors, for example, have learned how they can make a difference in others' lives by supporting groups like the Guardian Angels, who assist those dealing with the impact of ALS. And sadly, he had to go to the hospital this morning, so here to represent him is his lovely wife who also works for us. Thank you. So this award really is for Kimberly Stewart. Kimberly Stewart worked as an instructional aide at McCulloch Middle School, but her impact truly lies in her gift of countless volunteer hours to make the kids of Los Al to help the kids of Los Alamitos Elementary. On the school site council, she helped ensure our interventions reached our neediest children. She was a room parent, coordinated events for PTA, and was active in her son's Cub Scout troops at Meta LAE. In her last two years, Kim was a vital part of our ambassadors program and helped students become leaders on campus and in life. Words can't describe the influence Kim had on the LAE community. Sadly, after we uh, uh, gave her this award, she did uh, shockingly pass away. We will miss her and here to accept her award as her husband, Dave Stewart. So Dave Block 
has been a parent uh, supporting us and volunteering for years, starting with band, PTAs, uh, baseball program. He's a, one of the co-chairs for our uh, Yes on G residents for Excellent Schools. And I really can't say enough. It's just he's, so he's one of the district hero of the hearts for just the, everything he's given to our district as a whole and the countless years over his uh, 12 years in our district. So Brian um, is also one of our district heroes of the heart. And Brian also has given uh, countless dollars, resources, time, energy, all for the same thing, a passion and love for all of our kids. These awards really go to everyone up here who extends what they do for all children, not just their own. So rather it's the Yes on G campaign committee, Operation Steering, or the Baseball Boosters, we really appreciate all of the work also, and he's also a previous King of Hearts. For six years, Jeremy Overstreet has volunteered in classrooms at countless Rossmore PTA events, Come Walk in My Shoes, the Carnival, and in PE. I know, it's almost like we should pay them all. <laughs> yes, we should. Uh, perhaps his greatest impact, however, has been his leadership of the Fit-a-thon, which is vital to making sure all fifth graders can attend outdoor science school, a high point of their time at Rossmore. So this philosophy, all of our people, our volunteers, our staff, our community, really does lead to national caliber results. So I'm going to go over just some of those. If you're left out, a program you're affiliated with, don't be hurt. Um, but I listed some highlights. We're a California, every school is California Distinguished and a Gold Ribbon District, meaning every school. One of four districts in the U.S. that was on the AP Honor Roll for seven years in a row. That's increasing scores and access for seven years in a row. Post-secondary enrollment, over 91%. LoSal consistently ranks consistently for 20 years in the top two on state assessments. And if you remember last year, you were number two by 0.5. And you know, two is good, but what's better? No. That's really bad to say, but it's funny. And we also have no continuation school. And what's important about that is we serve all kids. We don't put some kids someplace else. They all stay and we find a program. And it's been a big challenge and we're working through it. We have over 280 Sunset League championships, over 20 CIF championships, 70 plus Division I scholar athletes in the last five years alone. Band participated in London's New Year's Day Parade. Lo we have so many local, state, and national championships across the arts, across our district, that I'm not going to list them all. The board meets every summer. They look at the data, look at the input that they've received, look at our surveys. I'm really privileged to work for them. It has been an honor to serve and to work for them. And also, I love that they have five goals, not 30. So uh, five, and we can really keep the main thing the main thing. And here's a word from all of our board members, because I know not all of them are speaking today. My role on the board is really to be the voice of the children and to advocate on behalf of what I believe is best to enhance their education, to make their lives better, and most important, to keep them safe and secure while they're in our schools. A few things that we've done that I think have made a really big difference. The first is, with partnership with our two cities, Los Alamitos and Seal Beach, we hired a, a school resource officer, a police officer, a uniformed police officer that spends full time at the high school. We painted numbers and letters on all the buildings so it's easy identifiable by first responders. We passed a policy where all doors are to be locked when there's children inside and classes in session. We've had training at all of our schools on security and safety issues, active shooter training, for example. Um, and I'm very proud of the work that this board did in putting forward those safety measures. I believe in public education. I believe it's one of the things that our country is founded on. And so I can, I can really make a difference from a big global perspective in keeping that public education moving forward. And then I can also move, work really locally and make an impact with children, with our community. Our community is so strong and, and exceptional. And it gives me incredible hope to see the young people that come through this district in this community because they are going to be the ones that impact the world and they are going to make huge changes and that's that's 
that's very exciting and looking forward. What makes uh, Los Alamitos special is it's full of passionate people. And our teachers are passionate, our administrators are passionate, our parents are super passionate, kids are passionate, I think, and we put our hands in the middle and we make things happen. And as a, as a school board member, working with my other board members, we were able to really look at the needs and work together to solve things, and I like that. You don't read about this in the paper where we've got matching funds or where we save taxpayers money, but I just felt we've been a really good steward and worked with our local city, Seal Beach and Los Alamitos and the Rossmore Community Services District. And I just find it's a collaboration. I see the assets of the school district as assets for our whole community. So there are parks and there, they're, they're everything in our community. It has been my pleasure to serve uh, on the school district uh, board and just look forward to more years ahead. I think we want all children to be successful and that that's a very lofty goal. We thought that every child should, high school student should take one AP class and it's really worked out fairly well. I was at the awards ceremony last night and uh, we have a tremendous amount of kids that are now passing their AP classes. They have part of their college on their under their belt and you know some kids actually find out that they're good at something they never thought they were really good. And they said, oh my gosh, I'm taking a really hard course and I really like it and I'm good at it. One of the things I am most proud of is that we do have an incredibly high quality staff. I've had staff members say that they'll go to conferences and they'll say, oh yeah, I teach at Los Al. And they'll go, oh, you teach at Los Al because they know our reputation. And you only get a reputation like that because of hard work and truth. We really have dedicated teachers and support staff and everyone, administration, board members, parents, community members, we're all here to make sure that our students succeed. And I'm so proud that we've been able to do that and it's one of our strengths that makes everything else possible. Our first goal, passionately pursue academic excellence from all students. Well, this starts with hiring, attracting, keeping, retaining, training, the very best employees ever. And so we have with us our Los Alamitos Unified School District Teacher of the Year, Ruth Friedman Fitch. representing all of our great teachers. And so next, we have three other data points that we really measure, and I do get people over the years that say, what about the kids that aren't going to go to college? You know, even high-level trades have post-secondary education. And research shows that whatever is helpful for kids to go to a four-year university or a community college help all kids in all trades. And so we also have 17 career technical education classes on our high school campus. So if you ever hear anyone say that we, have, we don't do those, that's not true. We do a lot of them. And so, but here's what's important. Students who complete A through G college entrance requirements while in high school are twice as likely to graduate from college. And if 91% of our kids go on to post-secondary education, that is the dream that our families have for their children. We've gone from 68 to 76% since 2011. So that 65% of our students that have taken at least one a advanced placement course, which gives them college credit. So the rigor of a student's high school curriculum is one of the single best predictors of college success. Students who are connected to school have better attendance, better grades, are happier, and are more likely to graduate from high school and pursue post-secondary education. So what's different about LoSal? We have highly skilled teachers and staff. We have outstanding, ongoing professional development, a culture of innovation, a legacy of excellence for over 20 years, and systematized intervention. That's uh, efforts that our teachers make to serve and support all kids. So to help us in this quest, because there are some things we cannot do, like charge families, so without further ado, I'd like to introduce the Executive Director of Lake that made this morning possible after our sponsor, Carrie Lowe. Woo! 
Good morning. I would like to first thank again and acknowledge Dr. Avani Patel and John Osborne from Alameda Psychare, again our title sponsors, and my amazing optometrist. If you're looking for one, highly recommend her. LAFE is the nonprofit partner of Los Alamitos Unified School District, and we exist to enhance educational excellence for all children. And we offer many after school and summer enrichment programs, and we're very proud to be offering free language classes to second graders for the first time this year. So hopefully some of your kids are taking advantage of that. We have our Summer Enrichment Institute, and we partner with our coaches and directors to bring many summer camps and clinics to your kids over the summer. We also have been doing our STEAM initiative for many years now, which brings STEAM fairs, free project preparation classes, and our district-wide showcase to the kids. And STEAM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, the Arts, and Math. And we also love to accept donations. And through the amazing support of our community and through the fees associated with our programs, we are able to give a lot to our district and to different programs across the district. So um, just this year, we'll, we will be donating $10,000 per school, so $90,000 to support STEAM efforts. We're donating $25,000 to support the salaries of the mental health counselors in our district. We also pay for the facilities we use. So this year we'll be paying $110,000 to support facilities and keep our district going strong. And that totals, thank you. <laughs> that totals over $775,000 that has been donated since 2013. And we could not do that without the support of our King and Queen of Hearts campaign, and we raised over $210,000 through that campaign. And we are continuing with that campaign for the last time this year in the form of a competition. We will continue to hold our gala, and we will be having Kings and Queens, but this is our last year for competitions. And so what we are doing is inviting folks to join the Los Al Leadership Circle. So if you're interested in joining LAFE in a um, powerful major way and keeping our amazing programs and support of the district going, please talk to anybody with one of those gold lapel pins about how you can join or talk to me. And with that, I would love to introduce the LAFE president, Mr. Kevin Gietig. Hi everybody, I just want to take a minute to introduce our uh, terrific board members that are here with us today. Please hold your applause until the end. First, Tom Lint, Trini Jimenez, Lena Lume, Felicia Gonzalez, Ruth Ann Kirkton, John Terrio, Kim Baldwin, Brian Leibel, and Teresa Blankenstein. Thank you. We also have a couple of uh, board member emeritus members with us today Randy Hill and Sean Payne. Please stand. <laughs> said, all those people I just named are also Los Al Leadership founding members, so talk to them if you would like to join. Thank you. So the difference in Los Al also is that we believe in all students. When you talk about all students, that's everyone. And there's quite a bit of diversity that we have, just educationally alone. And so research has shown that one self-efficacy is what determines our performance, not actual ability. Some of you may not also know that I love Valvano and I love his quotes. And he says, my father gave me, I should have kept those glasses on, Dr. Patel. My father gave me the greatest gift anyone could give someone, and that's he believed in me. So that's the other thing you can do for kids. Let your eyes light up, spend time with them, and believe in them. And when they fail, don't give up. Help them persevere and go to the next step. We believe that 100% of our students can be proficient, connected to school and the community, and complete the college entrance requirements. And we want you to believe it too. We have to be one team passionately committed to, cultivating an inclusive environment for all students filled with kindness, compassion, empathy, and respect for one another. If we don't have cultures that love our kids, and I hope that we do, then kids aren't going to thrive. We need ongoing improvement in order to provide a safe, welcoming, and nurturing culture that embraces and values diversity, and that means every kid, better education, and the responsibility of the bystander. So it's really important we teach our kids that when they see something, instead of say something, what's something else? See something, do something. There is no better place than Los Al Unified to do this work. I, I can't imagine. So we're known for the four A's. 
and uh, we're always growing that list, but high quality public education is the great equalizer. It's the promise of a better America and a future, a better future for all of us. And our students are amazing. and drug-free environment, and a leader with this effort has been our board president, Dr. Barkey, and now he's going to do goal number two. We're not different than a lot of other districts around the country, and we like to believe that what we hear about going on elsewhere in other schools won't happen here. But I want to ensure that we're prepared to the extent possible that we can possibly be prepared. So I'm passionate that every morning when I wake up, I want to know that this board is doing everything humanly possible within our financial resources and ability to ensure the safety and security of all our children at our school. We make a deal with all of you. You drop your kids off at one of our award-winning schools for a fantastic education, and we'll return those kids at the end of the day in safe working order. And I'm committed to making sure that that happens. So a few recognitions. 
Seal Beach Police Chief Joe Miller, Los Alamitos Police Police Chief Eric Nunez, Seal Beach Marine Safety Chief Joe Bailey, all law enforcement personnel that are here today, any military personnel that's here today, any veterans that are in the audience, and I don't know that we have uh, any uh, representation from the Orange County Sheriff's Department, uh, please stand if you're here too. So a round of applause please. You know, Orange County Sheriff Sandra Hutchins recently described our efforts in safety in our district as a model for other school districts around Orange County. There's 27 independent school districts in the Orange County area. Um, we're very blessed to have a unified district, K through 12. Not all districts are that way. So we can focus our effort throughout the district um, and be consistent in our, in our uh, measures. So this is a board priority goal, goal, safety and security, since 2012. So we've added additional security measures every single year. Violent intruder and disaster protocols, text-to-tip, mylar shatterproof window films. We've also added mental health therapists, prescription drug take-back events, CPR first aid, AED training. These are some of the non-physical security measures, if you will, that we've added as well. Peace Week, Guam, Griffins with a Mission, Digital Citizenship, Social Media Education, Random Drug Testing, Drug Detection Canines, Red Ribbon Week, every 15 minutes, more in-depth active shooter training. These are some of our, our priorities for the 2018-19 uh, year. Increase campus supervisors, add law enforcement or mental health uh, um, clearance as part of threat assessment. Uh, add improved security fencing. One of the items that I think is really important, again, small but really important, is we wanted to make all our campuses law enforcement friendly. We talked with the chiefs of Los Al, Seal Beach, and even with uh, uh, Sheriff Hutchins, and said we'd like to create spaces at the schools so when your deputies or um, law enforcement officers need to take a break, they can come to the school. We'll have coffee a clean restroom, an office or a desk where they can write reports and get caught up because we want that increased presence at our schools. Add surveillance cameras, sixth grade summit and middle school cares, compassion, action, responsibility, empathy and support program. I think it's critical. Lockdown notification system, blue light security towers. So this is new. This is a protocol that's going to be installed at the high school. Now, any of you that have ever taken your kids to a college campus, you'll notice that most colleges nowadays have security uh, towers. So if you're walking around late at night or even during the day and you feel at risk, you can push a button on a security camera or security tower, and it immediately notifies security or law enforcement nearby. There's two-way uh, communication. There's a camera system that will record once you hit the button. And so we're going to install this at the high school campus as a beta test, if you will, and hopefully, especially if the bond passes, and because uh, these are uh, expensive and financial resources are important to look at, we hope to, um, to implement these district-wide. So, um, number, goal number three, enhance communication processes to engage, inform, and educate all stakeholders. We can never do enough. We need to keep getting better at this and better, and uh, we'll continue to do that. It, it is the building block of all successful relationships, whether it be through negotiations, a relationship compact with our employees, our community, our families, our parents. I've learned more uh, this year than ever before the value of just conversation, listening with uh, a, a desire to understand and to improve. It's very important. Conversations, collaboration, and joint decision making weekly school newsletters, press releases, websites, videos, email messages. Uh, next, we have a commitment to exceptional customer service. Uh, Interest-based bargaining, it is important. We have over 1,000 employees. Again, we have 1,600 if we count our subs and all of the different people that work for us. So it's really important that we continually work on these relationships. And so our LAEA lead negotiator is here, if Stacy Schmitz could stand up. And LAEA stands for Los Alamitos Education Association. And our CSEA president and um, lead negotiator is also here. Let's give it up for Mitch Benali. 
And for the first time, we have some representatives here. I'm super excited about that. If you are a bargaining team member, an executive board member, or a site representative, please stand. So goal number four, we're going to manage and allocate financial resources to maximize students' educational experiences. So our total general budget is about $111 million. Most people probably aren't aware that that's how much it is. Our employees' salaries and benefits is $91 million. So that gives you a sense about what people cost. And so what do we use the rest of the money for? We use it to reserve for economic uncertainties. We use it for teaching supplies, classroom equipment, professional development, safety measures, long-term facility needs, deferred maintenance, and technology. We're one of the only districts that has never cut the K-3 24 to 1. And now we're working really hard, and our goal is really not to have any over 32. Of course, we don't control every single number, but we're working hard on that. Uh, next, we want to strengthen our partnerships. So you've already heard from Lake, but all of these groups, we couldn't do the work we do. We have millions that is donated every year. You may not be aware, but we don't use district funds. Uh, we're one of the lowest funded on the new LCFF formula in the county. So we don't use district funds, for example, when choir travels to Nashville for a national competition, or band goes to the London New Year's Day Parade. So that's all required um, donation funds that allow us to help us, and mostly from our parents, that are, is the reason that we're able to provide such extraordinary experiences for kids. But there are some partnerships I really want to take the moment to introduce. We have agreements with them that we also negotiate every one year or every five years. And so from Los Alamitos, we have, and hold your applause until the end, but please stand when I call your name, Mayor Troy Edgar and Council Member Shelley Hasselbrink, Warren Kusamoto, Richard Murphy, and City Manager Brett Plumley. The City of Seal Beach, we have Council Members Ellery Deaton, Sandra Masalavit, and Shelly Sestarsik, City Manager Jill Ingram. Passmore Community Services District, we have President Tony DeMarco. Los Alamitos Area Chamber of Commerce Chairwoman, uh, Shelly Henderson. For Seal Beach Chamber of Commerce President, Karen Coons, and Immediate Press President, Scott Levin. And so our fifth goal, provide high quality facilities to meet the educational needs of students. Listen, we're not about the buildings, but we have to have amazing school sites and campuses and rooms and space to provide extraordinary experiences for all kids. What's different in food services is we reduce, we don't charge families that qualify for free or reduced uh, priced meals. We started a breakfast program at LAE. How cool is that? And after we learn the bus, we're going to hopefully offer that at all of our schools. We have a 10-year deferred maintenance plan to upgrade. So once we've modernized sites, I can't say enough how important that is. We used to have trash cans under our roofs 10 years ago to collect water. We didn't have Wi-Fi capacity in our elementary schools. Isn't that shocking? And so when we passed Measure K, we were able to modernize all of our sites. You'll learn not fully the high school, but all the others. And it's been extraordinary, extraordinary for all of us. And so we have to put money aside every year in a maintenance plan so that every 10 years we go back to the modernized site and make sure that we fully upgrade it so that it never deteriorates again. So this last summer, shockingly enough, it's been 10 years for McGaw. Can you believe 10 years? So we went back to McGaw and we, uh, the roofs, re paint, redid some work in the rooms and made sure that infrastructure could support technology. And then of course we also do ongoing work with painting, builds, maintenance, etc. Uh, transportation, we really want kids on a bus. If you're a parent, put your kids on a bus. It's a dollar a ride. You have no traffic. The bus will drop them off. So we're working hard. We've gone from 300 to 900 in the last four years, so we're super excited about that. We're going to institute online registration, because who wants to write a check and fill out a form and carry it in? So we're working on that. It's going to be more efficient. Facility needs. So safety, th this is a big deal. People will often say, well, with Measure K, did we finish everything? That's not really how it works. So with Measure K, there were probably $350 million worth of needs that were identified. We really had to really be smart, and we ended up getting $125 million, and then I'm approximating, and almost $30 million in matching funds. 
So with that money, obviously you can't do everything on the original list, but we completely modernized all sites but the high school. So what's left? Safety and security measures. We had no idea 10 years ago about what would become available for safety. Air conditioning and sunrooms. We've had to reconfigure a few spaces and we could use air. Every, every parent I know wants more shade structures for their kids while they're eating, playing, those things. Our elementary families are passionate about new playgrounds. And we need more bathrooms at some of our sites. But the biggest need really is our high school. We have not modernized the infrastructure. It's 50 years old. Now, another question people say to me is, why didn't we do that 10 years ago? Well, 10 years ago, it was the best site. It didn't have trash cans under the roofs, and they at least had Wi-Fi. So, you know, you're always, you know, prioritizing. And so, we also need a new building for science classrooms. The UC system's going to change the requirement to three years, and they're going to vote soon. I'm pretty sure that's going to pass. We're lucky in that most of our kids already take three years, but a few now will have to add that. We have up to 31 old portables. They're disgusting. Three are already not used. We tried to remove four this summer. Well, we, we are going to remove them. But we put them on the market. We hope anybody would buy them for a buck. One dollar. Buy these portables and take them with you. No, no buyers. So that's how bad they are. And we also need our existing classrooms to be modernized. If there's money available, if a bond passes, of course we'd like a new performing arts center. The high school's performing arts center is smaller than McGaw's, and that's in elementary schools. And we're the only gym our size that, that it would have, I mean the high school, one tiny gym where people practice at six in the morning and eight at night. So the Board of Education completed two surveys and studied putting a bond on the ballot for three years. This is a tough decision for a board to put a bond on the ballot. It takes a lot of courage. We're asking for a $97 million bond on the November ballot, which will equate to $30 per 100,000 assessed value, not market, assessed value. The board resolution, I don't have room for all the entire resolution, it's on our website, commits to a budget for long-term facility needs to reduce, we, they don't want to ever have to go out for a bond again. Remember that fund, so every 10 years we upgrade all the modernized sites? We do that so that we continually upgrade them now, one a year. We can save enough to maintain modernized sites, but the initial cost to modernize high school is frightening, 97 million. Not to increase enrollment, a lot of people have asked me that. Now if you're an inter-district family, we love you. You have saved us during the budget crisis. You add such a rich element to our schools, but we got too big. So we are purposely reducing our new inter-district population so all of our schools can be smaller. And in fact, in our four elementary schools, which we've just completed the analysis, we're down 4% lower than we were 14 years ago. So when you hear that myth that we just keep adding, it's just simply not true. So we are decreasing enrollment of new inter-district uh, transfer students. We're down 295 students in the last six years. And we're down 80 alone at the high school this year. And that's not because we don't love them. We just want space. Space for STEM labs. Space for parents to meet. Space for things for kids. And we meet the conditions of the Orange County Taxpayer Association. So there's a Citizens Oversight Committee. It's that job. We post. People will apply. It ensures money is spent responsibly and only on projects stated in the resolution and on the voter approved list. And so there's a Yes on G, Residents for Excellent Schools Committee. They have to raise the money for the campaign and lead that effort. And our two co-chairs are here today. And so if I could have Brian Leibel and Dave Locke to please come up. And Good morning, everybody. We'll make this really brief. But what we want to do is we want to encourage everybody to get out. All of you are here this morning because you care about your kids and you care about this district. That's why Dave Block and I decided to step up and be the co-chairs of this campaign because we feel very passionate about our district and the involvement that all of you have in your children's lives. So what we are asking you to do is go on to our residentsforexcellentschools.org website, sign up and volunteer. Whether it's a lawn uh, sign or going out and doing district walks or working our phone bank, we need you guys to get the word out. Tell your neighbors, vote yes on G. It's very important for the future of our high school and our district. That's all I got. <laughs> Thank you. That was very
So, it's the last video of the morning. But I figured, since we just talked about that, I'm going to end with a video that was made a few years ago. And I love it. If you want to sing along, it's kind of fun. Because you know it's all about LaSalle, about LaSalle, go Griffins. It's all about LaSalle, about LaSalle, go Griffins. It's all about LaSalle, about LaSalle, go Griffins. It's all about LaSalle, about LaSalle. Slow, 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 yeah, it's pretty simple. We ain't no number two. We hold that Uno spot now, just like we're supposed to do. Our school's got everything. We banging out your speakers. All the fly kids and all the best teachers. Inside our classrooms, we're teaching and learning more. With iPads and Chromebooks, prepping that common core. Cause we got swag, swag. Can't make it stop. Cause everything we put our minds in, we always end up on top. See my mama. they go to middle school, it's all about that school. But the truth is, it's about where they're going to go after school, right? So when they get out of high school, that's, that's the test. Are they prepared to achieve the dream that they and you have for their future? So we work hard for that, and we also work hard that it's more comprehensive than that. So one thing I'm going to end on is that we like to say we're about the four A's. I might be looking to add a fifth A, but it isn't one or the other. We want to be good at all of them. Academics, athletics, activities, and the arts, and a culture in which everyone can thrive. And so we want to be known for that as much as those four A's, and you make that possible. So thank you for being here today.